asking for information at a tourist office. First, you will have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Hello, how can I help you? Um, hello. Is it possible to book a bus tour of the city here? Of course, sir. When would you like to take the tour? There are tours in the morning, afternoon and evening. Sometimes it's nice to see the city at night with the buildings lit up. We'll be going out for dinner tonight, so we'd prefer to go this afternoon. Oh, and it's for two people. Right. Now, I just need some details. Can you give me the names of the two people, please? Yes. Susan Field and James Carter. Susan Field and James... Sorry, can you spell your surname for me, please? It's Carter. C-A-R-T-E-R. -E Thank you. And can I have a contact telephone number? Why do you need one? Just in case we have to cancel the tour and need to contact you. I see. Well, my mobile number is 07988 636 197. That's 07988 636 197. Now, can you also tell me which hotel you're staying at? The Crest Hotel. Oh, uh, no, sorry. That's the hotel we're staying in next week. It's the Riverside Hotel. Oh, the Riverside is a lovely hotel. Are you enjoying your stay? Yes, we are, very much. We'd definitely recommend it to others. Oh, I am glad. Now, I can book you on the tour at 4pm. Would that suit you? Alternatively, there is one at 2. 2 would be better for us, please. Right. That's booked for you, sir. Two people at 2pm today, August the 14th. You pay the bus driver when you get on and it's £4 per person. Thank you very much. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Can I also ask you about the museum in the main square? I was reading about it in my guidebook and was shocked to see that the entrance price is £10. Why does it cost so much? Well, the museum has the largest collection of Latin American art in Europe. People come from all over the world to see it. But that's not the reason why it's so expensive to get in. You see, the building is very old and it needs repairs. The £10 ticket cost will go towards repairing the roof and the walls. I see. Well, I suppose it's worth paying £10 to see the collection. Yes, I think so too. Is there anything else I can help you with? Actually, there is. I was wondering if you knew of any good restaurants in the area. Well, there are a few restaurants near the harbour and a couple on the beach, which are nice. The problem is that the smell of the fish market is quite strong down there. Hmm, I don't think my girlfriend would be very pleased. I know what you mean. It's not very romantic, is it? <laughs> my advice would be to go to the next town. It's bigger and the restaurant selection is wider. You can get there by taxi and it only takes about ten minutes. The town is quite picturesque. Is it for a special occasion? Yes, it's my girlfriend's birthday, so I'd like to go somewhere special. Uh, do you know any of these restaurants well enough to tell me about them? Well, I know about a few of them, and there are pictures in this leaflet here. Oh, this one here is lovely, the Bellevue, and it's extremely popular. It has a famous chef, so it's not cheap, but the standard of the food is very high. It's right by the sea, and there are wonderful views if you get a good table. 
Then there's the Lighthouse Cafe. You can see the picture here, which isn't really a cafe at all. In fact, it's a great restaurant, and a lot of TV celebrities and actors eat there. The place has been going for over a hundred years. It's quite an institution around here.、Mm, I'm not sure about those two. They sound too expensive to me. I was thinking of somewhere small, not too upmarket, but with good food. In that case, what about Harvey's? The same family has run this restaurant for over a century, and it's reasonably priced and really popular with local people. Oh, and there's another family-run restaurant, Stonecroft House. New owners took over a month ago, and they're getting good reviews. There's a new chef there, and the food is meant to be very good. This leaflet has the contact details for all the restaurants, so you can just call them if you'd like to book a table. Great, thanks. You've been very helpful. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a guide named Matt, who is introducing their trip in Wildlife Haven. Now you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen to the first part of the introduction carefully, and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Well, good morning, everybody. My name's Matt, and I'm one of the three guides here at Wildlife Haven. Our job is to make sure that you all have a great time here with us and go home feeling happy and relaxed. As you can see, we're away from the city in a remote area between a national park and the sea. To encourage you to relax. There are no radios or TVs, and the only phones and newspapers are in the office. So, if peace and quiet is what you've come for, this is the place to be. From your cabin on the hill, you'll find you have the national park behind you, and you can look out from the sea from your front balcony. Your luggage will be unloaded from the bus and taken to your rooms in a few minutes. Once you have picked up your key at reception, please locate your room and check that all your luggage has arrived. The daily program here at Wildlife Haven is flexible, and only as demanding as you want it to be. You should each have a brochure setting out the facilities and various walking tracks you can take. And on the bus, you are given a green sheet setting out a number of group tours in the coming week. If you want to join any tour, just write your name and room number on the relevant sheet along the wall here. Tomorrow there is a beachcombers and rockhoppers tour. Exploring marine life in the rock pools along the beach, or if you'd prefer to go inland, there's a guided forest walk that takes you off the walking tracks. If you want to catch some lunch, you could join the beach fishing expedition. And at night, you'll see there is a moonlight forest walk that leaves each night at 7 p.m. So there is plenty to choose from at Wildlife Haven, and of course, that includes just sitting on your balcony watching the waves roll in. But I would recommend my favorite tour, the waterfall walk. This departs at sundown each day, and also provides the opportunity to have a moonlight swim. Now you have some time to look at questions sixteen to twenty. In the second part of the introduction, you are going to get some advice from Matt. Listen carefully 
and answer questions 16 to 20. You've chosen to visit us in January, which is one of our hotter months. And although you may be tempted to wear a minimum of clothing, you should always take precautions against injury, particularly in the National Park. This includes sensible footwear. You'd be surprised how many of our guests ignore this advice and end up being sorry. And socks are a good idea, too. And even though you might be under trees a lot of the time, it's a good idea to wear a hat in this hot climate. There's no need to be too concerned about walking in the National Park, provided you use common sense. It's true that there are poisonous spiders in the park, but they are really more frightened of you than you are likely to be of them. I should also warn you against eating any wild berries. Some are edible, but you should avoid them all. We'll provide all the food you can eat. Well, that's about all for now. Dinner is from 6 to 8 p.m. in this building. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear two students, Jenna and Marco, discussing a business studies project they have to do. You now have 15 seconds to read questions 21 to 24. Come on, Marco. We've got to get on and sort out this project for Professor Buckley. Hang on. I want to make sure we've got all the information. Now, where are we? Well, today we need to sort out exactly what we're going to do and how we're going to divide the work up. OK. How long have we got, by the way? Um, the end of term is April 6th. And he said to hand it in on week 8, so that's March 25th at the latest, because the beginning of that week is the 21st, mm. so not long. Right. Have you got the notes there? Yes. He wants us to do a fairly small-scale study, like the last one, on whether or not businesses were offering more benefits to staff. Mm. And we've now got to look at the rise in older workers. It should be fairly straightforward. Yeah, as long as we keep it small. Mm. Who's marking it? I don't know. Sometimes he gets the PhD students to mark it for him. Oh, actually, it just says here, a senior lecturer. Mm. I suppose it's too much for Professor Barclay to do them all. Yeah. Anyway, how are we going to go about this? Well... We have to decide how big we want it to be and who... Yeah, we... but I think we must sort out a timetable for the project. Otherwise, nothing will get done. OK. Uh, do you want to do that? All right. I'll do it as soon as we finish here. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. OK, what do we have to do now for the project? What's the best way to go about it? Um, well, Professor Carter suggested we set up a focus group to get some in-depth interviews, but I think that'll take a lot of time. Yeah, I agree. 
If we did a focus group, we'd have to spend time deciding who to include in it, and it's not necessary to do one anyway. Oh, fine. And if you agree, I think we should get in touch with the businesses on the list Professor Carter gave us and ask them if they're prepared to participate. Sounds good. Uh, then we can go there, give them questionnaires and collect them later. Exactly. Okay. Then do we need to book one of those study rooms in the library so we can work together to input the data? Perhaps not, as I guess just one of us could just sort it out, actually. Yes, that would be easier. A lot of what we're doing is qualitative, so it'll be writing up rather than statistics. No software for that, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it would look better if we had actual shots of some of the staff, because we're citing appearance as a factor in employability, aren't we? Yeah, OK. I'll factor that all in when I sort everything out tonight. I'm glad we decided to work together. I think it's going to work out well. Yes, well, given that we had to work in pairs on this project, I think we were right to choose each other. Hmm. We complement each other academically, as we're each good at what the other isn't. <laughs> in fact, we should have tried working together before. <laughs> yes. Now, how shall we split the work? I'll do the analysis, shall I? Oh, OK. It's just that it might be faster, because I'm used to doing it. Although your English is better than mine. I need more practice at reading, really. OK, I'll do the presentation then, if that's OK with you. Yeah, sure. I don't mind speaking in public, but I hate preparing all the notes for them. The thing is, the tutor said one person should do the whole presentation, and he said he expects me to do it because I haven't done one yet. No, that's fine. Now, let's see. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a talk from a series of lectures on the survival of our planet. Professor Samson talks about endangered species of flora and fauna. First, you'll have half a minute to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully to the talk and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today's topic in this series of lectures on our planet is about ensuring the survival of our very important plant and animal species. In this lecture, I want to discuss one way that we can do this. No one will ever see a huge dinosaur thundering through the forest. No one will ever see a paradise parrot flash its rainbow colours across the sky. The fact is that many animals and plants have been wiped out. Sadly, they are extinct. It is too late for them. Extinction is forever. We can't do anything about the species that have already disappeared. But today, there are many animals and plants that could still become extinct in the future if we do not act now. They are endangered. The African elephant and rhinoceros have become endangered because of the value of their tusks. Australian parrots and reptiles are smuggled onto planes because certain people in other countries are prepared to pay thousands of dollars for them. 
And there are many other species around the world that are endangered because they no longer have a place in which to live and reproduce safely. The main cause of extinction is the destruction of habitats. A habitat contains all that a living thing needs to survive. Space, light, water, food, shelter and opportunities for reproduction. The population of the world is growing rapidly and this is placing great demands on land and resources for housing and for growing food. When vegetation is cleared and swamps are drained for agriculture, mining and suburbs, or when rivers are dammed to store water, plants are destroyed and animal life is threatened. In other words, humans are changing and destroying the habitats of animals and plants, which is in turn reducing their chances of survival. So how can we conserve habitats and help save endangered species? Well, one way is to protect their habitats permanently in national parks or nature reserves. National parks have been created in many countries. They encourage people to enjoy the beauty and diversity of the animals and plants that live there without harming them. By supporting and visiting these parks, people can become more aware of the species that live there and how the parks work to protect them. It is very important that, when visiting a national park, we keep them safe for future generations of plants and animals by obeying a few rules. Firstly, follow the fire regulations. Don't throw cigarettes or build fires, except at certain times of the year in especially allocated areas and facilities. Secondly, remember to leave pets at home. Pets, such as cats or dogs, can hunt birds or other small animals. Some pets might even escape and become a serious threat. Thirdly, place all rubbish in a bin or take it home. Plastic bags or leftover food are dangerous to the animals and harm the environment. Don't pick the flowers or damage the plants. Flowers create the next generation of the plant. Also, for the same reason, birds' eggs must be left in their nests. The loss of species in the past is sad. However, there is hope for the future. Despite the demands of our increasing population, we can work to protect the plant and animal species we still have. So I would like to conclude by saying that I believe that, with strong public awareness and support of these national parks and reserves, the future of endangered species can be ensured. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.